Hi everybody, welcome back to another Kubernetes Lumbar example. In this video, I'm going to showcase how to use a Configure Map to externalize your configuration from the actual application code. Let's get started. Okay, so what is the Configure Maps? As you can see, the right side, there is, for example, how to specify your Configure Map on a Kubernetes resource file, uh, aka YAML file. You can satisfy your metadata, like your actual config name. Uh, this example, my config map, and you can specify namespace. This is an optional. And then you can have multiple ways to define your configuration, like a read it all from file, or just like this example, just read it all. So you might a uh, little bit uh, confused what is the difference between config map and secret. Uh, I already make some video uh, how to use when uh, use case that you're gonna use secrets. The one big different thing between complement and secret is usually for non-confidential data with just key value errors. So for example, you need to externalize configuration like a database username and password like a credential information. You should use secret rather than config map. And the one of the good benefit of complement, just like a secret, you can decouple environment specific configuration from your application code. For example, you need to, you need to define your database host name on your local machine. You just need to maybe local host because you're going to actually run that database on locally. But in production environment, you need to uh, define actual database uh, application name or IP address. In that case, you might need to have a multiple configuration file or YAML file or refer to external meta database. But Kubernetes Compute get rid of that kind of burden from developer uh, capability. So this is a really cool thing how to use uh, Compute Map. So how to use config map inside the pod? There are four ways to use config map uh, with the pod. So first of all, you can just uh, define the config map uh, specification inside the pod YAML file uh, with the uh, spec under the spec, and also you can use the environment variable uh, for the that container. And you could also uh, add the file uh, for all the read-only volume uh, for application pod. And the last thing is you can write a code and run inside the pod, which allows you to use uh, the Kubernetes API to read the config map. Let's get right into Lumbar example, how it works. Here's my purpose application as a normal Java application. As you can see, I already generated a new project, which allows me to have uh, external RESTful API. Uh, as you see, uh, just hello endpoint, and you can have uh, output, like hello, let's see, it's just like a hello world application. So one good thing is uh, here is a config map, uh, the YAML file. I just use config map kind and then name my config map and my namespace doh dash dev. And here is the, my uh, sim simple little message, like a hello, uh, the Kubernetes name uh, Java Quark state. And then I'm going to try to create this config map on my Kubernetes cluster. I, for example, uh, First thing, I'm going to make sure my existing uh, namespace like DOH dev, and I'm going to apply this uh, YAML file using kubectl. And then here's my Kubernetes uh, cluster, which is a uh, Red Hat developer sandbox. It's a pre, uh, free for developers, and then really easy to access that uh, this is single uh, Kubernetes cluster when you signed up, uh, developer and redhat.com slash uh, developer sandbox URL. All right. So as you can see, uh, my config map just uh, created it, and you can go to detail and the data. You can find the Kubernetes native Java purpose. And then uh, there's uh, no resources found here. So because I didn't deploy any application resource in the namespace. OK, let's go back to my ID2 for my Java project. And the first of all, this is a main Java project based on the Quarkus. So you can see there are multiple dependencies, which is a Quarkus extension. One of the beauty of the Quarkus uh, provide uh, Quarkus config, uh, Kubernetes config extension, which allows developer to use uh, Kubernetes resources as an example, secret and config map. And also here the Quarkus open shift extension, uh, which allows me to deploy this application to Kubernetes like open shift. Uh, it's automatically, which uh, include containerized application and the packaging application and deploy to remote 
Kubernetes cluster automatically. Here's the application properties. I already specified all Ubuntu and Kubernetes deployment configuration. As you see, the like deployment true and the deployment target Ubuntu. You can actually specify Kubernetes, and then I'm gonna build this application based on Docker container strategy. And then here are the two more important configuration to use uh, existing complement in that namespace. The first one, uh, Kubernetes desk comp enable true, which allow me to access the existing complement resources. And then here is the complement name, my complement I already uh, created in EOH dev namespace. Now I'm gonna re try to deploy that complement uh, key and value from my Java application code. The complement property annotation, which allows me to use that uh, complement key and value. Here's I'm gonna try to add a new uh, RESTful API method. As you can see, uh, just try to uh, endpoint a message and return the value from the copy map. So I'm going to try to use a Quarkus CLI to build this application like a, a fast jar and then containerize this application as a uh, Docker container image and in the end the deploy to Kubernetes cluster. When you go back to the developer sandbox topology view, you can find the Quarks application already deployed. I just copy, uh, I just click on the route URL to access the endpoint. And here is the hello, our existing endpoint, like hello rest easy. And now I'm gonna try to access the new endpoints message, which allows me access the existing complement values. Thanks for watching. Hope you're next and learn by example.